Hi guys, welcome again. And this time around we are simplifying this expression. Again, the trick when I'm simplifying an expression like this, I always need to have my diagram there. Then I can know that that's zero, that's 180, that's 90, this is where 270 is. Okay. So, cos of x minus 360. So, this is the same. Remember, I always said it's the same as minus 360 plus x. So, minus 360 means we go clockwise. And then, plus x, we go back. We are still in the first quadrant. So, this becomes the cos of x times sine of 90 plus x is in this quadrant where sign is positive. So this is a positive ratio, but we have to change it to cos again. Okay, so we change it to cos of x. Then we're going to add cos squared minus x. Minus x is in this quadrant where cos is positive. So this is a positive angle. So this becomes plus cos squared x minus 1. Cos x times cos x becomes the cos squared x, right? Cos squared x plus cos squared x minus 1. This becomes 2 cos squared x minus 1, okay? 2 cos squared x minus 1, well... well this is now to do with um, our compound angles, okay, a double angle formula rather, where we said cos of 2x is equal to 2 cos squared x minus 1. So this becomes the cos of 2x. Okay, so again, even when it comes to simplifying the trig expressions, you'll notice that the double angle formulas find themselves there. Sometimes we're going to look at other examples later on, later on when we have compound angles involved. So, so far, this should be fairly straightforward, guys. Okay. So, that is my final answer there. Okay, so again, we're asked to simplify to a single trig ratio. So what I'm going to do, no, that's where my 0 is, that's where my 90 is, 180, and there's 270. So we've been doing almost like the same pattern. Sine of 180 plus alpha is in this quadrant where only the tan is positive. So this must be a negative angle. So we're going to reduce that to the negative sine alpha multiplied by the tan of 360 plus alpha. So we said you go 360, then you're going to add alpha. It's going to be in this quadrant. So which means this is a positive angle and we reduce that to the tan of alpha times the cos of alpha all over the cos of 90 minus alpha okay so this is the same as saying now you add 90 degrees we move so if you add 90 you go there minus alpha means go back remember I said negative angles are added anti, anti, uh, clockwise they added clockwise so negative alpha you go this way so we're in this quadrant Again, that is a positive angle. And we're going to change it to the sine of alpha. Okay. All right. Now, I can 
see that the top now I've got a tan of alpha which I can simplify to a sine of alpha over cos of alpha times a cos of alpha. All of that is underneath this sine of alpha. So this sine alpha can divide that sine alpha. I remain with a negative one. That cos alpha and divide that cos alpha. This simplifies to minus sine alpha. Okay. So guys, when it comes to using reduction formula, okay, I always encourage you to draw a simple modified version of the cast diagram. Okay. Just to draw a simplified version of your cast diagram, right? And then you need to identify where your angle is. Because this will help you determine whether the angle is positive or negative. Then use those simple rules that we spoke about to change the angle. And then simplify as, pos as possible. So the most important one I think is this one because this will help you see where that angle is and then figure out whether that angle is positive or not. Once you draw a cast diagram, you identify where the angle is, then use the simple rules. If it's a cos and 90 plus or minus theta, switch to sine. 180 plus theta, switch to the acute angle, but it's going to be the negative. 360 plus theta, we've seen that 360 plus theta, all you have to do is make it the acute angle of that theta angle. Okay. All right. Um, so, so far we've done those problems. Now, the other type of problems that we can also talk about is where we are given the ratio is equal to maybe a variable M or P. And then we are asked to determine certain angles without the use of a calculator. We'll discuss that in the next video. But so far, I hope now you're in a position where you understand how the cast diagram works, how to use simple reduction formula, okay? How to use that to simplify trig ratios. That has been the emphasis of these videos. Thanks for watching, guys. Don't forget to subscribe. Share this video with a friend. You never know who you might help. Friend in need is a friend, in, friend indeed. See you guys around next time. Thanks for watching.